Hey guys, TechieKHD here again with another video, and today I'm making a video that's a little bit different, although um, for those of you who have paid close attention to the channel, I have made a couple of videos like this before, um, and this is about my new car. Now, of course, I picked the most interesting day with the weirdest weather to make this um, video. It doesn't typically snow in Seattle, yet here I am um, with a car that's built pretty much entirely for the summer standing on a snowy day in a parking lot, but here we are. Anyway, I wanted to walk you through a little bit about my new car. It's weird because I've actually had this for a little while now, and for those of you, again, who've been paying close attention to the channel, I actually did put up a video about this car on the channel a little while ago, um, but I had some processing issues um, when I went into the YouTube editor, and it actually ended up corrupting my video. And I thought it was just a local um, glitch on my graphics card and I had it up for a while. Um, and then my friend actually texted me saying that he was watching the video and he noticed a lot of artifacting. And so I just decided to start over. Um, I've been looking for an opportunity to put this video together um, and I just thought that today would be a good day to do it so I could finally get it up and show you guys a little bit about my car. So to start off, this is a graphite blue metallic 718 Porsche Boxster. Um, it's not a Boxster S, it's just a standard Porsche Boxster. Um, but you guys will notice I've done some work to the car already. Um, for those of you who know me, um, I tend to modify my cars. Um, in the short time that I had my um, Mercedes C63 AMG, had already done some work to that, including the exhaust. Mostly some aesthetic work on that car. Um, this car, of course, is getting a little bit more than just basic aesthetic upgrades. Um, but I plan on keeping this car longer than I kept the AMG. And so uh, I'm willing to put a little bit more time, energy, resources, and I guess money into it as well. But like I was saying, it's a graphite blue metallic uh, 718 Porsche Boxster. It's actually on 20 inch Carrera S wheels. Um, and these wheels, when I bought the car, actually came in the Porsche anthracite um, gray, which I thought was a really, really cool color. And I think it looked really good, but I'm the kind of person who likes a little bit more contrast with the colors on my car. All right guys, so as I was saying, um, the wheels were powder coated uh, locally in Washington. I live in Seattle. The car was actually worked on um, in Kirkland at, an area, at a shop called uh, Alloy Wheel Repair in Kirkland. Um, Zach worked on the wheels for me and did a really good job. Um, they took the wheels off the car, powder coated them in this poly gold, which is the name of the color. Um, I ordered the powder from a company called Prismatic Powders down in Oregon and had them ship it up here to Washington for me. Um, it went straight to Alloy Wheel Repair, and then we had a satin clear coat done on top of the wheels. Um, if you come a little closer, I'll be able to show you. Um, I, of course, daily this car and I drive it every day. And so like I was saying, the brake pads um, are stock brake pads, so they tend to build a lot of brake dust and it takes up onto the wheels. Um, I washed the car about a day ago, so they're pretty clean for right now, but of course over time they tend to develop that brake dust. I try and wash the car about once a week if I can, um, otherwise the wheels start to look pretty dirty, which is probably the biggest downside of having um, lightly colored wheels. So if you follow me um, and take a look at this side of the car, this angle, um, the latest modification was actually done very recently. I picked the car up yesterday from Mock Tuning, which is sort of where I get most of the work done on the car. Anything to do with any mechanical or performance modifications um, is worked on at Oct Tuning in Redmond, which um, is a shop that specializes predominantly in German cars. Um, they worked on my Audi, um, and they also did the suspension work here on my Porsche. So if you can see, um, the wheel wells, uh, the tops of the wheel wells don't actually line up with factory height, and that's because um, I'm just a sucker for lowered cars. I just have to have my car lowered and make sure that the ride height is absolutely perfect. Um, and so uh, the car is actually sitting on TechArt lowering springs. Um, I wanted to keep the lowering springs because I like my stock Porsche damping and I didn't want to switch to coilovers. This is the same reason I kept springs on my um, Audi back when I had that car. And I'm extremely happy with the way that it turned out. Um, I typically go with H&Rs whenever I get springs for my cars because H&R just has a really good reputation for making a quality product and I was used to that. But um, I was very surprised with the tech art springs. The car rides a lot like factory. Of course, there isn't as much travel in the springs, and so when we go over a curve or if there's anything 
the road. Um, of course, there's less travel, and so the rebound is quicker. But the car tends to, it never upsets. The springs are as soft as they need to be for comfortable daily driving. And when the car is in sport and I'm really pushing it, um, they tend to be just as stiff as necessary um, to be able to give me a very controllable um, ride quality and ride feel while sort of not upsetting the car in any way. Of course, Octuning spent many hours making sure that the camber and toe adjustments were perfect on the car to make sure that it was up to Porsche spec for being this low. And of course, this car is quite a bit lower than a stock um, Boxster of this year. Uh, it's actually lower than the GTS, it's lower than the S, um, it's lower than the Spider and the GT4. Um, and if we come close to it, you'll see um, in fact, because of the aggressive negative camber needed to make sure that the tires don't rub against the inside of the wheel wells, um, we actually have quite a bit of gap over here between the body panels and the tires, and it's actually a lot more noticeable in the front as well. Uh, and so to counteract this, because I just don't like the way that this looks very much, I'm going to be getting a set of H&R spacers, but what is necessary is waiting for the springs to settle on the car for a little while and make sure that it's really sort of um, relaxed into the metal and into the chassis of the car and so we know exactly what the ride height looks like from a more permanent standpoint so I can better measure what the distance is going to be between uh, the tire and the wheel well to avoid rub in daily driving especially when turning and taking more aggressive corners. Outside of that I don't think I'm going to be doing too much more to the fitment of the car as far as the wheel setup is concerned. Um, the car is actually fully PPF'd and so there is um, a paint protection film um, all over the car. Uh, the car is also ceramic coated uh, on top of that. That was done at APC here in Seattle. So I get a ton of questions about the front license plate on my car. I know that that's a point of contention for a lot of people and people are always confused about it because of course um, I live here in Seattle, Washington and of course I have my Washington plates on the back. The car is fully legal. Um, technically I do require a Washington front plate but um, most of the officers that I've met and interacted with tend not to have so much of a problem with me rocking what is essentially a vanity plate so long as my tags are in check in the back, which of course they are. Um, people ask me why this is on here or if I brought the car over from Dubai and um, it's there because of kind of just an emotional connection back to my home for me. I'm from Dubai originally and longtime viewers probably know this. Um, I had the same license plate on the front of my Audi. Um, I wasn't able to mount it to my Mercedes in time. I actually ended up selling the car before I was able to do that. Uh, but I like to have this here just as a little connect. Um, the plate actually used to be on my dad's old car back when we lived in Dubai. Um, it was on a white 2011 uh, Range Rover Sport HSE. Uh, unfortunately, of course, none of us live there anymore. Uh, my dad lives in New York, I live here. Uh, but I like having the plate as a, as a little memoir. If we walk around the back of the car, uh, probably one of my favorite parts is uh, the FabSpeed TurboVac exhaust. Now, for those of you familiar with this car, the 718 is actually a four-cylinder. It's not uh, a six-cylinder like every uh, Boxster that preceded it. Um, and um, that is probably the biggest uh, point of contention with this car for avid Porsche enthusiasts and fans. Um, is that Porsche ended up building a car with a four-cylinder instead of their flat six, which was very well known in the 981 generation of this car, so the car that preceded it in the Cayman and Boxer platform, um, to sound really excellent. It had amazing power delivery, very linear, it felt really, really great. It had an excellent tone um, and a very characterful engine. This is very different. This car um, is a lot more uh, mechanical, or is a lot more technical um, than the Boxster and Cayman platform that it um, succeeds. Uh, it is more like a well-tuned machine than it is uh, a more emotional experience. And while that isn't necessarily what the typical Porsche enthusiast looks for, I really, really ended up loving the character of this car as far as the way that it drives is concerned. It's faster in every conceivable, conceivable way than the last car. It handles better. Um, while it doesn't sound as good, there are workarounds. And so that workaround turbo back exhaust that I have on the car. The exhaust is a full turbo back system. It's valved, so when I uh, put the car in sport mode, it actually flips open the valves and lets, in a uh, lets out a ton more sound. Um, it uses, uh, or sorry, it has these carbon fiber caps on top of it, which I think look pretty nice. Um, also, the stock exhaust tips that come on the car is just a single piece, um, a single piece exit, which is not my favorite. I really like having the dual pipes. 
Uh, and the new GTS cars actually have um, dual exits, one on each side, which um, while that works on a lot of cars, I actually really like the center exit on this car, but I wanted to have the two pipes coming out of it. Um, I'll give you a little rev and a sound clip in a moment, but I think that from an aesthetic point of view, it actually matches the look and feel of the car very well. FabSpeed has done an excellent job making a quality product, um, and the car sounds excellent. When the car is not in sport mode and the valves are closed, it doesn't pop and crackle quite as much, which is really nice for daily driving. When you're on the highway, there's no drone or anything of that sort. But when you're pushing it harder on some back roads and you open up the exhaust, um, it really does sound quite fantastic. So uh, before I forget, I wanted to talk a little bit about the tire situation on this car. Uh, the Porsches, it's kind of funny because uh, from the factory, they kind of come at random with either a set of Pirellis or a set of Michelins. My car unfortunately came on the Pirellis and uh, while I think those are pretty good summer tires, I daily drive my car and I drive it year round. As you can see, it's snowing today. And while these tires aren't necessarily rated to be snow tires, they're not um, AS3s or anything like that. Um, the Michelin Pilot Sport uh, 4S's or the PS4's has been my favorite tire. I got a set of them for my Audi a couple years ago and absolutely fell in love with them. They grip, they're really, really excellent. They are very comfortable. They have the lowest amount of road noise that I've heard in a performance tire in a very long time. Um, and they have a ton of sidewall, which helps make them really reliable for daily use. Uh, so of course, I'm running a set of them here on my car. Unfortunately, with this car being a rear wheel drive car, it's very light, but um, it tends to get a little bit of wheel slip and stuff like that pretty often if I'm really pushing it hard in conditions where these tires aren't necessarily made to go. So I have got a pretty bald patch in the center area of the tire. Of course, since yesterday when the car was lowered, the car has quite a bit more aggressive negative camber. So it gives me a little bit more grip and I'm gonna be able to last them out um, a couple more weeks or months, but rest assured, I'm gonna be getting another set of PS4s to replace them. And uh, one little thing, I tend not to have a ton of stickers and things like that on my car, but you might have noticed on the other side and then here as well, I have the little Star Spangled Banner. Um, I have the exact same flag on the other side of the car and this is just because um, I'm very proud to be an American. I just like having this on my car. Um, it makes me happy. I don't like bumper stickers or anything like that, but in moderation to have just a little bit of, um, I guess a little bit of celebration or a little bit of pride in um, what you do, where you live. Um, this country has given me a ton of opportunities, uh, one of which is to own a car like this. I'm 23 years old and I bought this by myself. Um, the kind of opportunities I've got here in America have changed my life in an exponential way and in ways that I don't think would have been possible elsewhere. And so when I moved here a couple years ago, um, worked my butt off and was presented with the opportunities that I was able to take advantage of, well, that's what this country gave me and I'm very, very proud to um, uh, be an American. I took my oath a couple months ago and uh, officially became an American citizen. Um, and so I have those stickers on the car just because it's a point of pride for me. Um, finally at the back I actually do have um, a teeny little like tiny uh, Easter egg sticker for those who look out for it. I'm a member of a club here local to Washington called Avance um, and I like to have just a black sticker on my window um, to signify that. So very often I'll get tagged on like Facebook groups and on Instagram and stuff because people will notice the Avance sticker and just be like hey was this a member's car? Really excited, cool car, like enjoyed seeing it parked here. Uh, typically whenever the cars at the shop getting any work done um, as far as performance mods and things like that are concerned. For upcoming modifications, um, I am going to be giving the car an APR Stage 1 tune, which is going to take it up to 353 horsepower on 91 octane gas. Um, I routinely fill the car with 93 octane, which is what's available local to me, and it's only ever seen 93 octane um, during my ownership, and it's going to see pretty much just that. Um, if I had 97 octane available to me, I could get it up to 374 horsepower, I believe, but I think for a car that's this lightweight, um, at 300 horsepower right now, it already produces a ton of power for how light it is, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, but because, of course, it is a turbocharged car, um, while there's a lot of torque and push down low, it tends to run out of steam a little bit at the top end of the rev range, and that's kind of where I'd like to get that last extra bit of juice to come out of it. Um, and that's probably it for planned modifications going forward on the car. The only other one that I realize I haven't mentioned yet is here on the driver's side. Um, the car actually came with just the standard um, 718 wheel, but one of the things that I uh, really want out of a daily driver, especially in weather like this today, um, is a heated steering wheel. And it's a very little, tiny detail. It's something I could live without, uh, 
but if I don't have to, I'm glad I don't have to. Uh, and so I do have the GT multifunction steering wheel in this car. It's a leather steering wheel. It's just from Porsche. It was purchased at Suncoast Parts and sold at Porsche Tacoma uh, and coded down there as well. The, the wheel is an official Porsche OEM part and it is a multifunction wheel. So it has all the different functions for my media controls. Um, and of course it does have the heating element built in when I just click the little button and it's good to go. And that really sort of rounds out my experience with this car as a daily driver. It makes it very, very easy to daily and take care of and enjoy. And it's a comfortable daily drive. Um, and then also is just an excellent performance car when I want to take it out on those back roads and have some fun with friends. One last thing before I forget, I actually have a Redenzo Pro-M um, radar detector. This is not because I'm actively looking to break the law, but it is just to sort of um, detect those cops in areas that are absolutely safe to be driving a little bit quickly and spiritedly in and uh, some cop who has been given the duty to sit there and ticket people ruin their day for pretty much no reason um, is looking to just snipe people out in that area this is for situations like that the radar detector was hardwired in at uh, HKP Customs in Bellevue, Washington. Um, Aaron does an excellent job. He installed my radar detector on my Mercedes as well. Um, and it is hardwired in to the car. It goes up through the rear view mirror housing and then is wired directly down the A-pillar into the fuse box in the car so that it maintains um, a sustained um, power and charge and doesn't uh, sap uh, any power from um, the rear view mirror and this was very important to me because I didn't want to have any potential um, codes thrown, any battery issues, any electrical issues, and just wanted this to be installed as perfectly as possible. Um, I really look forward to the weekends when I can put the top down and go out on long drives with my friends around the Pacific Northwest. Um, I think this car has really, really uh, been not just a vehicle for me to enjoy um, the the activity of driving, but also a vehicle to really help me form some really interesting friendships and connections um, with other Porsche enthusiasts and car enthusiasts across the Pacific Northwest where I live now. Um, and so that has been my ownership experience for this car so far. These are some of the modifications I've done to it. I um, wanted to put a carbon fiber front lip on the car like I had on my Audi, but um, fun story, I was picking up a girl for a date on, in my Audi and ripped off my front lip as I pulled up to her driveway to pick her up. And so uh, my girlfriend now lives in a place that has an even steeper driveway than <laughs> that last one. Uh, so the front lip might be a no-no, but I might be thinking about getting a more aggressive carbon fiber rear diffuser at some point. Uh, but for the external modifications and body panels, I really love the way that Porsche styled this car. I don't think it needs too much more might be wrapping parts of it satin black just to help make the front a little bit more aggressive uh, but those are just some ideas i haven't really planned anything out yet and put those those projects in motion um, the only thing that's about to happen of course is getting those spacers put on the car uh, to help the fitment flush um, and that should be about it either way um, that's been it guys thank you so much for watching this video um, i know it's a little different and it's longer than some of my typical content uh, it isn't even necessarily tech i know a lot of youtubers love teslas and model threes and things but um, as an avid car guy this is sort of my um, car of choice i absolutely love this thing and um, yeah i'm just really happy to have been able to share it with you guys today thanks again so much for watching and i'll catch you all in the next video peace